It's July 9th. It's day 53 for the eggs. And it's time to cut. As I said at the end of part 3, I didn't want to make any more updates if it was just nothing but bad news. And today I have some good news for you. At the end of part 3, if you remember, there were four eggs left. One of them was probably not in the game anymore, and I'm thinking that that's almost a certainty now. Shortly thereafter, one of those three that were still in the game, it started to become discolored as well. Now I was encouraged because that discoloration was happening a lot slower than with the previous one that had done that. But it's looking like that one's also not doing that great. We're going to find out today. But that does mean I still have two that have made it to day 53 that have not had any discoloration. And in fact, here's the good news. Since three weeks ago, when we made the last video, those two have actually plumped up a little bit. And one of them kind of significantly, too. If I look back and I compare how it looked to how it looks now, it's a lot larger, significantly more volume, and it's also feeling a bit more massive. Also, I've tested those two for veins, and they still have a nice vein system. We might have two that make it. Now, I still don't want to get my hopes up too high yet, and I hope that you don't either. I don't want to disappoint you. It could be that inside of these eggs, yes, there is life, an embryo has developed, but there could be problems with it. When it comes to the animal kingdom, parthenogenesis isn't necessarily the healthiest way to reproduce. There's a lot of advantages to having sexual reproduction where genes intermix. You get a good, healthy combination. If instead the animal is just using its own genes, you have a much higher chance of certain bad genes getting multiplied again, being expressed more. And so we could have some developmental issues. We could have some bad mutations. It could be that inside of these good eggs is a, a python that just isn't able to function or maybe is even the equivalent of being a stillborn. So I want you to go into this video understanding that. I don't know what I'm going to find in there, and I don't still know if, if we've made it to the finish line. But I have made the decision to cut them, and I'm doing that today. When it comes to cutting the egg, let me describe to you first what that is. You're making an incision into the egg, so that way, in some cases, maybe you just want to peek inside and see how things are going. But in other ways, too, it's to help the python be able to emerge from the egg when it's ready. Now, it's day 53. That doesn't mean that the pythons are necessarily ready to emerge. But there's no disadvantage, as long as I'm careful, to cutting the egg today. Pythons, typically, if they're at the temperatures I've kept them at, the ball python is going to emerge from the egg somewhere around day 53 to day 55, somewhere in there. I wanted to cut at this point because if they are lower in mass from being dehydrated, they might not be strong enough to break through the egg on their own. When that python's ready to burst through the egg, if it can't, there's a risk of it drowning. We haven't gone through this much work and this much effort, this much hope, in order to just have that, that python not be able to get through the eggshell. So I want to make sure that that's open and ready for it. And I want you to know, too, this is a common practice that python breeders do. But let me be clear, the video we're about to make is not a tutorial. I have never done this before. You should not be seeing me as some sort of expert in showing you how to do this. I am not. This is my first time. Now, in order to satisfy curiosity and also get a little bit of practice with it, I'm going to be cutting into the bad ones first. And this is maybe the only part I'm apprehensive about because this could have a smell to it, but we'll find out. All right, here we go. Okay, we're starting with this one here that was separate from the other four. So this one is the one that most recently went discolored. I'm make an incision right here and try to slide and not cut any potential veins that might still be there. Try to separate, run this along so I'm not cutting the membrane that has veins potentially on it. not smelling good. It kind of smells like rotten fish, to be honest. Oh my gosh. 
I can see I can see scales. That's the eye right there. And there's definitely the snake pattern you can see in there, but I don't know if this one's still developing or not. The good news is if it is still developing, it still can develop. Here's our other two, plus the one that went discolored that has been fused to the other, so I didn't remove it. I don't know that I really need to cut into this one. Upon feeling it now, and I don't want to tip these upside down, but there's, there's less than a centimeter. There's like a half a centimeter of thickness to this egg. There's no way that a python is developing in there. It's just not possible at this point. But these other two, I'm very hopeful for. It looks like there's a big vein right here. There's not much going on right there. So here's where I'm going to try to make my cut. Now I'm running the scissors along the inside to try to get the membrane away from the shell. And again, there is a risk. I might cut a little bit of a vein, but it's a very small risk if I do. Certainly this moisture that's coming out is a lot more than the last one. rotate this. If we look on the inside, there is definitely the pattern what appears to be a healthy snake in there. Oh, oh, did I just see what I saw? I saw. Oh, I just touched it with the scissors and it moved. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. I want to leave it alone because I want this to off be all like, I don't know what I just said there, but I'm really, really, really excited. Now for this guy. This actually right here looks like a good spot. Small little snippet. Oh, nice moisture coming out. Like I could, I could reach in and touch her. Oh, I just want to cut just a little bit more, just a little bit. This side and that side. There we have the pattern. Just saw movement too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it just moved. Oh, it's moving. She's moving. Okay, time to close up. We know what's working. If I wasn't a school teacher, and uh, students didn't check this channel, I'd be using a lot of colorful words to describe my excitement right now. All right, back in they go. And hopefully in a couple of days, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, a few days from now, we'll see some heads pipping out of there. <laughs>
Vila, you're gonna be a mom. Woo! -hoo. This is awesome. I'm so, so geeked. Okay, so, uh, down to business though. If you thought that like you were gonna see a baby ball python come out today, sorry, you know I would have had that as part of the thumbnail. I'm gonna let you know. But what cutting the egg does is it allows it to be able to come out whenever it wants to. It still has some developing to do, still calling its egg its home, and now it can come out whenever it wishes. For most ball pythons, when they are ready to hatch, they'll break through that eggshell on their own, and they just stick their head out, and they start breathing, maybe a flick of the tongue, kind of not ready for the whole real world yet, but ready to at least kind of get a glimpse of it. And so I'm, I'm hoping that they will do that any day now, those two. Um, it's called pipping. You maybe heard me use that word. So putting the head out, that's pipping, and they should pip today, tomorrow, the next day, we're in that 53 to 55 zone. Could be later. Obviously, if that happens, oh yeah, there will be a part five. I am so excited. For any of you who have been on edge like I have about this, thank you for being along for the ride. I feel like I can take a, a pretty large sigh of relief. We're not done yet though. I need to see a healthy ball python out and free of the egg. And then, since they probably are lower in mass than they normally would be, I have some concerns about making sure that they feed well, making sure they're, they're going to be ready to eat. But hey, it's down the road. This is a very excited, elated, ecstatic little kid, Rich Lund, saying, see you next time.